What's up, Hyperfast Nation? On this episode of the show, we've got an amazing guest who has helped hundreds of people defer capital gains taxes through Deferred Sales Trust. This can be a game changer for you or your clients when you are selling assets such as real estate, stocks, even crypto. He's also a commercial real estate broker. He's closed over 88 million in commercial deals. Welcome to the show, Brett Swartz. Welcome to the show today, Brett. How are you doing? Damn, better than I deserve. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. Well, I'm excited about the stuff you're going to talk about today. Particularly, I know if, if you're an agent, investor, doing deals, listings, over a million dollars are up, you really want to make sure you tune in today because Brett has a lot to offer in that area. Before we dive into that, though, Brett, why don't you give folks a little bit of your background and just tell people how you got to, to where you are today. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Dan. So um, I started out in my kind of real estate journey um, in the Bay Area. I call it the MC Hammer Days, which is in the Mission Hills, Fremont, San Jose, kind of Silicon Valley. And uh, building houses with my dad and owning rentals, you know, he was owning. And I was I was helping, helping do those deals. And so as a part of that journey, um, I fell in love with real estate, you know, the sticks and bricks and, and, and the ability to get cash flow and, uh, and the ability to, to buy and sell deals. So um, fast forward, I played college basketball and I was able to actually spend some time in San Diego and played down there and then moved back to Northern California, finished out my career. But during that time, I took an internship at a company called Marcus and Millichap, where we learned how to help people buy and sell multifamily properties. And so I got training from some of the best in the business, but it wasn't always easy. You know, I was still, even though I had a real estate background, um, I didn't know how to underwrite a property. I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know how to be a broker. So I had people training and coaching me. And this was in 2006. So the market was like red hot. Things were going really well, but then things started to slow down. So I went from making a little bit of money to like next to nothing overnight. And this was during the 2008 crash. I don't know if you've been somewhere, Dan, where you're, you're so scared, you're not sure how you can provide for your family and how you're going to be able to, um, you know, just keep the lights on. And so that's where I found myself either, either a walking away from my, my real estate brokerage career at that time, or B finding another way. So I'm in my mentor's office. It's a random Thursday. It's raining. Another deal just fell apart. I'm so frustrated. I'm like welling up with stress. I find myself like crying, like, oh my gosh, like, I don't like a guy who cries. I'm like, this is, I'm like giving everything. I've never failed before in a sense like this, but I feel like I'm failing. Um, part of that story too is my parents were divorced and I was young. So my dad had all the wealth and let's say he just didn't pay the child support as much as he should have. So I was with my mom 90% of the time. And so I knew I didn't want finances to be this thing that caused stress for my family. Um, but all of a sudden this is exactly what's happened. So I'm newly married, baby at home. And so I go to my wife and I go, hey, look, a couple of options here. We can move in with my brother to a small condo. I can get a side job and hustle at Cheesecake Factory. And I can keep our dream going here for to be financially, you know, really successful. Um, or I can go get the, you know, nine to five day job. And so she said, hey, I believe in what you're doing. Let's, whatever it takes. And so we moved in with a small condo. I humbled myself and I went to Cheesecake Factory. And he goes, hey, you have, I'll, I'll hire you, but you have two, you have to be here for two years. Like, I don't want you leaving here in five months and you close a big $50,000 commission deal. Like I said, I'll be here for two years and no matter what. So that began the journey of my financial, um, kind of journey and brokerage journey. But at the same time, my managers, I mean, uh, my, my clients at the time were going through the huge challenge of too much debt, not enough liquidity, not enough diversification. They had overpaid via the 1031 exchange. And they knew they were overpaying in the 0506 market, but now they're losing half of it or all of it to the banks. And so we, we, uh, my manager at the time brought in a gentleman to speak on the deferred sales trust, which now I help and coach people on. And I started to apply it to my business and fast forward, my business started to grow. 
Fast forward, my wife's been able to stay home full time with the kids. I've been able to retire from the Cheesecake Factory. And now I just coach and train agents on how to use this for high end primary homes, save a failed 1031 exchange. It works for cryptocurrency, public stock, private stock. It needs to be at least a million dollars or more in net proceeds and net gain in order for us to justify our fees. But in the, but that's all I do now, and it's, uh, it's my passion. Can you give some people just a little bit of basic information on the 1031 and the, the, the DSTs deferred um, sales trust. Cause I, I'm, I'm sure there's just a lot of people out there that are confused by it, or maybe even never heard of it to start with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the first thing to understand is that the DST is not a Delaware statutory trust, which is just another form of a 1031 exchange. Our DST is a deferred sales trust. It's based upon IRC 453, which is known as a seller carry back. And we'll get more to that in a minute. The 1031 exchange is what I like to call it the blockbuster transactional way of doing things. So do you remember uh, Dan going to Blockbuster on a Friday night and you want that movie and about before you get that movie, somebody takes it right in front of you from that cardboard box, right? But even if you got that second movie that you want, you have to return it within three days. And if you didn't rewind it, you get a penalty. Well, I propose to you that that's the way that 1031 is. It's blockbuster way of doing things, right? We know it. Our, you know, as agents, we know it. Our clients know it. But it's, it's kind of broken in a lot of ways. And the biggest way is with timing, right? We call it the shotgun wedding, get engaged in 45 days and overpay or get married in, in 180, right? Our parents taught us to sell high, Dan, and buy low. They didn't teach us to sell high and buy higher with more debt, more liability, more tenants, toilets, and trash, and a, and a deal that we wouldn't have bought if it wasn't for the capital gains tax. So the premise is this, most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with capital gains tax and it's somewhere between 30 and 50% of their gain. So we use this deferred sales trust, this Netflix way of doing things to not only give them capital gains tax deferral, but also the ability to diversify their investments, get out of debt, get liquidity, and then buy at optimal timing. The best deal story for that is a gentleman who sold a property in 2006, okay? And this is the single story why I started my company. And so my business partner um, now, he goes, Brett, yeah, we got a client. He's worth a couple hundred million bucks. I go, oh, that's really cool. Um, well, what did he do for the deferred sales trust? Well, he sold a property in Minnesota for 20 million and he had a huge tax and he's looking around. This guy hates the stock market. He's a commercial real estate guy. And he goes, I can't find a deal that makes any sense. I'm gonna use this deferred sales trust. I'm gonna defer the tax. I'm gonna park it in there. Well, five years later, the bank calls him up and says, hey, we just foreclosed on the property. That you uh, you sold to that you know that that high high price buyer before. We're just curious. Would you like to buy it back? And he goes, well, maybe. What's the price? And they said, well, about sixty cents on the dollar. He goes, that sounds like a pretty good deal. So he reallocated the investments out of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds into an LLC, and then he bought the property all tax deferred. Okay, and he bought it at sixty cents on the dollar, not mm. using a ten thirty one. And so. When I heard that story, I said, this will change everything forever. If enough agents know about this, right? This is the Netflix way of doing things, right? We can sell high and buy low. We can sell high and wait for a deal to hit us over the head, not chase deals with a hair on fire, right? And pay a bunch of tax. Now, let alone also realize that the 1031 exchange, it only works for investment property, just a small sliver. It doesn't work for cryptocurrency. We're doing a $5 million cryptocurrency sale. Um, and do another $10 million deal. And these folks have, they bought it at a hundred grand and they're deferring all the tax. And as a part of that, they have a huge gain. And we're gonna defer it all, but they're gonna use the funds to go buy investment real estate and get cash flow. So I'll pause there because you might have some questions. Yeah, so that, I mean, that, that one, the first story, quite incredible. Are, you know, are you saying he sold that property originally, moved the money into your, um, deferred sales trust and then and then when it came available again he was he pulled the money back out of, of there to, to buy it or or my my he didn't pull it right? back out that's the key okay. right he just reallocated to an llc and partnered with the llc to buy the investment property so had he pulled it out to be taxable right but think of it like an ira or 401k right what can you do with that you can do a number of things you can put it in stocks bonds mutual funds you can put it into real estate you can do a number of different things but the deferred sales trust is like Netflix versus not Blockbuster because you can put it into multiple things at multiple times, all diversified. Gotcha. So, so people can basically, if, if they don't have um, the property identified, you know, they're, they're using 
you guys and I, and I assume you take the money and you've got a multitude of investments that it's going in or, or when they give the money exactly. to you, what, what exactly, they're, they're obviously deferring the tax, mm -hmm. uh, but then what are they actually investing in and are they, are they getting cash flow out of that, appreciation, both? Hey, hold that thought for a minute. Do you have a client that needs to buy or sell a home in the DMV area? Then why not trust the highest selling team in the DMV, the Carrie Scholl team? We've helped thousands of buyers and sellers and would love to help your clients. And we guarantee we will save them time, money, and stress throughout the process. And they will be so grateful that you referred them to us. Go to carryshoal.com to learn more. Again, that's carryshoal.com to learn more about sending us your clients that need to buy or sell a home in the DMV area. That's carryshoal.com. Yeah, great question. So first of all, these notes are, are typically 10-year notes. And realize that you're lending the funds to the trust because you're not the owner of the trust. Very important to understand the differences here. This is why we're not following the 1031 guidelines because we're not doing a 1031. So we just did a deal in Palo Alto, an $8.3 million luxury home. The gentleman was, he's uh, in his 60s. He's ready to retire. He has this huge gain, right? And so he doesn't qualify for the 1031 is the first thing. So he uses the deferred sales trust to sell the house, pay off his debt, defer tax. And then he fills out what's called a risk tolerance questionnaire. And this risk tolerance questionnaire determines how and where the funds are invested. Everything's mathematical, Dan, so we're not guessing. Everything must be approved by the client. Okay, and whether that be investment real estate or whether that be stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. All, all must be approved. So once it's approved, then an allocation is presented, and then my business partner, who's the financial advisor, he manages all of the all of the securities. Okay, um, and then on our side, um, if they want to go back into real estate, we have options for that too. Gotcha. So the people will uh, sell their property instead of doing the ten thirty one. They defer it into to this this deal with you. The 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 uh, deferred sales trust and it's essentially a like you're borrowing it from them for 10 years it's a 10-year note am i, am I yeah they're, they're lending it to the trust right okay. so yeah so think of it like if you were to sell your, your multifamily property for 10 million bucks and there's a guy named joe down the street with to buy it from dan well joe can give dan all 10 million which would be taxable or dan could carry back 100 percent financing and finance that you know that person the difference is here, we're going to add this trust to the equation. So instead of you having to put all your risk in this guy named Joe down the street, right, who you may or may not pay you back, who might run the property into the ground, who's going to maybe refinance and pay you back a couple of years later, we're going to we're going to ask him to cooperate with the trust. But, okay, Joe, bring all $10 million bucks, all, all close. And instead of, instead of Dan taking that $10 million, we're going to send the funds to the trust. Okay, we're going to sell the asset to the trust right before it sells it to the cash buyer. And this is where the transformation happens, right? You have you can take this thing for 10 years, and every 10 years you can renew for 10, renew for 10, pass it to your kids. You can obviously live off the cash flow. Most of our clients will take interest-only payments between five and six percent, seven percent. Keep a little 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 balance between the eight percent that it's earning. Although you can dip into principal and pay tax on that too. It's totally up to you. It's your money. But the key is we're, we're extending time um, for the mm -hmm. tax that would have been paid. And we're living off the interest of the total amount. Fascinating. What What do you think the um, There's a lot of obviously proposed tax changes, you know, being debated. I'm sure Q3, Q4 this year, people are going to be <laughs> busy reacting one way or the other. One of the things that we've we've heard is the 1031 is going to be capped at 500k. Um, what What are you you know, what are you kind of seeing there and how, how would that potentially affect these uh, deferred sales trusts? Yeah, so the proposals on on the um, on the table are absolutely a commercial real estate and investor and wealth game changer, right? So what's happening is it's the redistribution of wealth, right? So essentially what the government's proposing at this point is to take all of the major amount of wealth and trying to transfer it over to the government over this period of time based upon what the laws that I'm seeing. Now, these are all just proposals. And even if they pass, a new administration can come in and, and, and take and go back the other way. So, and, and, and what they're proposing does sound pretty extreme, but sometimes they set a big high bar to meet somewhere in the middle. But you're right, these are absolutely something to take serious and to plan for, because one of them is, is the 1031 exchange, limiting that 
um, to a certain amount of gain, right? Which essentially kind of eliminates the 1031 unless you're doing small deals. Um, the second one is the stepped up basis, right? Taking that away, which is, which is probably the biggest one out, out of all of them. The third one would be taking the 20% federal capital gains tax rate and basically doubling it to 40. Right. So instead of 30 to 50 percent capital gains tax and depreciation recapture, it could be 50 to 70 percent. Right. So it's just a massive amount of game changing things. Now. Get prepared. Right. We think there's a perfect storm going on politically with what we just talked about. The demographics with the baby boomers. Right. The largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet is happening right now. And these are the baby boomers that own primary homes, investment, real estate and businesses. And they're faced with a huge amount of gains. Um, and the last one is just the marketplace is so highly appreciated and people went through this 08 crash and they want something different, right? They sense that something's there and if they can get out and diversify and get liquid and pay off debt, this is the transformation we can provide for families. But as a real estate professional, if you're listening to this, um, or as a client, if you're listening to this, you want to pre-plan, get educated and get empowered. By the way, we don't charge anything unless you do the deal. So we'll do the planning, we'll form the trust, we'll get everything set up. For some reason it doesn't work, um, or some reason the deal doesn't go through, or you don't wanna, you don't wanna do the deal, we don't charge you anything. So I mean, a, a number of these proposed changes that you, that you have on the table, a number of them would make what you do even more important. I mean, certainly if the capital gains rate doubled, that's, that's gonna make the ability to defer it even, more beneficial, correct? Yeah, yeah. The bigger the pain, the 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 more the solution um, provides um, more value, right? And so I always say, as real estate professionals, by the way, I'm a commercial real estate broker myself. I told you I started at Marcus and Millichap. I still help people buy and sell real estate. Um, but I always say we're not in the business of selling real estate, Dan. We're actually in the business of solving problems. Okay. Right. And so problems are changing. We're in a very dynamic, rapidly changing marketplace, right? Where the old blockbuster way of doing things they're not a great solution for people. Why do you want to squeeze a you know, square hole, right? Uh, a circle hole in a, in a square peg, right? It just, it just doesn't make sense. And people know this, right? But they feel like they're trapped by this 1031. Again, this is where we come in with the Netflix way of doing things. And so solve the problem, look out for your client, and then see your business grow, right? Obtain that $5 million listing if you're just a $1 million listing agent, right? Obtain that $20 million listing if you're just a $5 million listing agent. Why? Because you walk in and you say, I'm gonna solve a problem. So we just did a deal in Aptos. It's a $7.9 million deal on the coast around the beach. It was used to be an old, it used to be their own primary. They moved out, made it a rental on the beach. They bought it for like 900,000, zero depreciation. She's in her seventies. She is not selling if it's not for the 10, if it's not for the deferred sales trust, right? She's just not gonna sell. But you walk in and you solve the problem. You're like, oh my gosh, you just solved my problem. I'm selling. So that gets the listing for the listing agent, right? It gets the, the solution for the client. But there's different tools. The so 1031 is a tool. The Deferred Sales Trust is a tool. The Delaware Statutory Trust is a tool. Each of these tools serve their purpose. An IRA or 401k. The key is understanding what the tool is, that it's legal, how to apply it, and how to ask the correct questions for your clients to, to draw out that challenge and then say, okay, here's an opportunity for us to solve it. Hey, hold that thought. Do you want to get 100 tips for free from my best selling real estate book, The Hyper Local, Hyper Fast Real Estate Agent. If you do, go to hyperfasttips.com and you can download 100 of my best tips today. Again, that's hyperfasttips.com. You can download 100 tips on how to grow your business, get more clients, deliver more value to more people. Go to hyperfasttips.com. What are you seeing in the commercial market? You've, you've mentioned a couple of times you're still active there. Um, what's what's it like in that market now yeah. over the last year? <laughs> Absolutely. So let's focus on multifamily, right? It's one of the craziest, craziest times for multifamily investing because you have um, rapidly appreciating primary homes, which typically basically means uh, harder and harder to afford um, houses, which means rents for rentals go up, right? So you're seeing this trajectory of this this rapid increase of rental rates. Um, Sacramento, for example, where I'm, where I'm focused on multifamily, year over year, two straight years, was the largest rent gain in the nation, two years in a row, right? Wow. Um, that was a couple of years ago, and it's, it's, kind of st it's kind of steadied out. I still think it's in the top 15 in the nation. But just it's staggering to think about the amount of wealth that's been created 
this last five years in multifamily value add properties. By the way, that's my favorite product type, right? And along with mobile home parks and senior housing assisted living, I own properties with partners and I love that. I love it, but I just think it's not a great time to be a buyer, right? And it's for the obvious reasons, low inventory, record low interest rates, which is propping up values, not a lot of value add forced appreciation opportunities. So I just think it's not a great time to be a, a, a buyer, right? It's a great time to be a seller. Um, then there's some other stuff like, you know, people repurposing, you know, different product types. So office or industrial, industrial's red hot as well with Amazon, you know, you have, um, um, you have medical office that seems to be doing pretty solid because you know the medical profession you can go to each little kind of niche product type and of course it's geographically uh specific uh retail obviously took the hardest hit with with a lot of changes but that was already kind of happening with some a lot of the amazon stuff so a lot of areas to go into but i do like commercial real estate in places like tennessee texas florida right very pro pro business where all of the migration a lot of the migration is going to a lot of the business are going to and um so that's kind of my take dan yeah, I mean, people, uh, obviously, people are, are moving to, to places where it's easier to do business, I think, in general. We've, we've bought, interestingly enough, we've bought a couple of deals from Marcus and Milchamp listings uh, in, in the D.C. market. Uh, we've taken retail and office places that were being used for that, but were zoned mixed use, and now we're, we're getting condos out of them. And, and, perfect. You know, it's a perfect yeah. value add creative way of doing something outside the box, right? That most people aren't, don't know how to do or want to do those. I always love those deals. And you can find those deals in every single market, right? You just got to be, make sure you have, yeah, everything lined up and you're ready to do, do execute on the business plan. I, I just, I feel like that's an example of like, there's not many spots right now, many asset classes that aren't super, super up <laughs> and you know, retail office maybe is one of the areas where you can find a good deal. So if you can take it and move it over into one of the other categories, that's yeah, that should be a winner. Absolutely. Uh, well, this has been uh, really great. I, I think a lot of people aren't aware of some of these tax strategies and ways to, you know, help help your sellers or. You know, help yourself if, if you've got a big asset to sell and don't want to give half of the profits over to your silent business partner, the government. Um, so I thank you for that. I always like to end with a hyper fast round if you're ready for some rapid fire questions and answers. Yeah, I'm ready. I just want to touch on two other things, right? Sure. A, cryptocurrency, right? Again, we can defer tax, public or private stock. As well, we can save a failed 1031 exchange. So a lot of applications here. The key is pre-planning though. We need to set this up before close of escrow, even even uh, unless it's at a 1031 company, then that's the one place where we can still save that. But the earlier, the better. And there's never any pressure to do a deal with us. We literally will underwrite, go through it, model, form the trust, get it already set up. If you don't use it or deal isn't closed, no problem, you don't owe anything. But the key is to pre-plan. It's never too early for us. So that, that works before you, so if they're going to sell the crypto, call you first, basically. Yeah, don't sell okay. it until you set up the trust and we transfer it from the crypto to the trust. And then the trust will sell it on the open market. And then the, the funds will go to the bank and then you can invest it into real estate and getting the cash flow going. So yeah, very important that you, you set it up and we transfer it in the correct order. Gotcha. All right. Um, all good points. On to the hyper fast round. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate investor right now? Uh, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune. This is a, a, a thought or a philosophy by Jim Rohn. And most of us, you know, going to college, I wanted to get a college basketball scholarship and I wanted to get an academic scholarship and I wanted to get a degree and I wanted to close my first deal in real estate and I wanted to buy my first deal. And I, you know, all of those things are great. Um, but they're external, right? The, 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 the real growth happens on the internal and that's working on yourself harder than you work on your, whatever goal you're trying to work on. Right. And as you grow as a, as a leader, then you attract and you build, um, you attract more success is a better way to put it versus chasing success. So as a new, new investor, looking back at myself, it would be like, don't chase the success and the outcome work on the internal leadership, personal development, health, personal finance, my faith, my family, right? Then those other things will come, right? If that makes sense. 
All right. What's something you're doing in your business right now that you weren't doing a year ago? Um, I'd say the YouTube YouTube channels, right? And 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 creating content on a consistent basis. Like I had started the YouTube, but it wasn't I wasn't all in, and I didn't hadn't have my team to support me with the marketing effort and the editing effort it was more was more on me than it is now on our entire team. So, so I would say the, one of the biggest changes has been the ability to produce content consistently on YouTube. What's a typical mistake that you see experienced investors make? Um, a typical mistake I see experienced, you know, not knowing what their options are like the deferred sales trust and overpaying for property. I get calls at least once a month, like, Oh my gosh, like I wish I would have known about what you did or do, right? I thought I couldn't sell my business and defer tax, or I thought I could. I had to do a 1031 and had to overpay because the timing, right? So it's just what you don't know can and does hurt you. And so uh, just uh, being, I guess, open-minded, right? To, to new ideas and new thoughts. What's the biggest challenge you've ever had in business and how did you overcome it? Yeah, that was, again, definitely the 2008 crash where I went from making a little bit of money to nothing overnight and uh, and, and had to move in with my brother and work at the Cheesecake Factory. Right? I had to get my pride and ego out of the way to keep my dream alive. And that was working 60, 70 hour weeks, nights and weekends at the restaurant and by day making cold calls and learning and growing at Marcus and Millichap. So by far, that was the most challenging for sure. And uh, But without that story and without the journey, I wouldn't be here today. All right, last one. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Um, 10 years from now, um, let's see, I'll be, my vision would be to, uh, in really a, a year or two from now, never having to close a, a deal ever again, right? Because I've built up the business in my team where, where we can be, my family and I have, with five kids, my wife and I have five kids, and it'd be coaching, training, uh, educating, we homeschool our kids. Um, my kids, we play sports, you know, soccer, tennis, basketball, all of those things. So just hands on with my kids every day. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Brett, for being on the show and for all the lessons and, and value you added. And um, I know you've got a lot of creative solutions to provide people that are selling or have clients that are selling a number of assets. So if you just want to summarize that for everyone again and let people know how to contact you, connect with you, learn more, uh, that would be great. Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. Yes. So uh, remember, if you're selling or you have a client who is selling something that's worth a million or more of gain and a million or more of net proceeds, including cryptocurrency, stock, including investment real estate, including primary residences, including businesses, you want to go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com and download our free ebook. You can how to sell business, real estate, or cryptocurrency smarter. And it's basically nine steps to getting your deferred sales trust set up and ready to go. You can also go to our YouTube channel um, and search Capital Gains Tax Solutions. We're also on iTunes for our podcast. And the last thing is if you're like, hey, I'm a real estate professional or financial advisor, business broker, commercial estate syndicator, and you want to get trained on actually how to grow your business using the Deferred Sales Trust, we have a coaching program. And you can go to experttaxsecrets.com. That's experttaxsecrets.com. And literally, I just try to download my entire brain of secrets and, and knowledge and equip you with this strategy because we do believe it's the number one way to attract and unlock capital and to do more deals uh, moving forward. And can you can you clarify one more time? Is it a million in gain, taxable gain, or is it a million in proceeds or both? Or both or? Yeah, both. Okay. So you need to have both, at least $1 million net proceeds and at least $1 million gain, right? So if you're selling a $3 million property, but you have two and a half million of debt, not good, right? If you're right. selling a $3 million property, you have $2 million of debt. Okay, you're good. And at least a million dollar gain as well, you're good. So those are the kind of the two parameters. Now, if you have two properties, right, a real estate deal and a stock, 500000 each, yeah, you can do that, right? That's fine. Um, it equals one, right? But but we don't we do not do go smaller than that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brett. I appreciate uh, your time on the show today. And everyone who watched or listened, thank you for tuning in. Please remember to share this with someone that you think could benefit from hearing it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Dan.
Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos.